me is right now at the CSPC in Calgary is Walter Schwabe. And Walter, you're basically the reason why everybody's able to sit in their office or sit at home and watch what's going on here at the <laughs> Dallas Park. Well, actually, I, I, I don't know if I'm responsible necessarily. It's obviously a team effort. But, you know, we're here working with uh, the CSPC uh, at their fourth annual conference here at the TELUS Park Center in Calgary. And it's, it's been a fascinating experience having this been the first time we've worked with these folks. Uh, you know, the, the, the crowd itself has been incredibly giving with their time coming to speak with us here and tell their various stories from whatever area they've been focused on. So we've actually learned, and I, you've been doing all the segments, mm -hmm. so you've been learning probably the most uh, yeah. because we've done, I don't know, what is it, 30 or plus segments here. Right. And it's just a, it's just a wonderful variety. Mm -hmm. Should mention too, you're with Fuse Logic, right? And so that's Executive the company that's broadcasting yeah. this. Yes. Um, so when you look at at something like this, of course, they're talking about science policy. What are some of the things that you've noticed? Because you've listened to many of the seminars as well. Well, there's been some overarching themes uh, that have come out. One is uh, that's been mentioned a number of times is the Nash, the need for a national science policy. Is there one? Now, that's not something that I think, uh, certainly for myself, I, I focus on every day, even though we're in a technology space and uh, innovation. Um, I don't think about a national science policy uh, from that level. That being said, there's, uh, there's a debate about it, whether we need one or not, whether it's relevant or not. How would that change things, if it will? Uh, blogged about that this morning on Fuselogic.com. So, you know, I, I actually fall on the side of commercialization. Because as an entrepreneur, you have to commercialize and then generate revenue. Uh, academics have a different role. You know, they would sit back and, and contemplate things and, uh, and, and put some time into research, and that's fine. But, you know, we have to get out there and drive revenue every day or we don't survive. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about commercialization. So if there's a national science policy that does come into play, how will that help Canada be better at commercializing the ideas that uh, we're generating? Uh, and in fact, we heard from uh, Jeff Hill of Deloitte talking about the fact that, you know, we're doing okay on the innovation side, but we could be doing better. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I think that, that his message was commercialization. Well, and that's where our country falls short, commercialization, patents, and that sort of thing when it comes to, to products as well. Have you heard anything here from perhaps a, a certain sector or anything like that that you go, you know what, I know what would make a definite difference with that group? Uh, you know, I think overarchingly, I think I would start there, and overarchingly, uh, what I've also heard again here in Canada is that we're just too nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, we are a, a, a nice society. We're known around the world for that. But when it comes to business, we've got to drive harder. We've got to be more aggressive. We've got to take more risk. We're risk adverse, and that was mentioned here. So does a science policy enable more risk taking in this case and, and commercialization? I'm not sure it does. Uh, you know, the, the, that debate is still raging on, as I blogged about. But, um, you know, there are definitely uh, some differences between what sector you're talking about. And some of the themes here are agriculture, healthcare, energy, certainly. Now, the energy sector was out this week talking about, listen, what a great job they're doing on the transparency side. What a great job they're doing on the environment side. Mm -hmm. I would tend to disagree. I don't think that they're doing enough. Mm -hmm. And I certainly don't think they're doing enough on the communication side. Now we've heard some, some influential folks in the energy sector here on the set talk about how they're communicating well, talk about how they're being transparent. But I think if you ask the average individual, even right here in Calgary, which is, you know, energy sector head mm -hmm. office central, right? If you asked generally, if you thought that they were just overarchingly great communicators about what's going on in the field, I don't know if you'd get the same reaction. Do you not think though that they think that they are because they're having to do more now than they had to do years ago. So for them, it might be a big step. For the general public, it may not be enough. Well, to, take, to, to quote Eric Newell, who obviously knows his way around the oil sands, mm -hmm. given his steep experience in the space, uh, you know, he mentioned, he said, look, back in the old days, we, don't, we didn't really understand mm -hmm. the environmental impact, right? And so, absolutely, uh, you know, but I would argue now, uh, having da uh, David Wickham on with COSIA, mm -hmm and talking about how the, the, the six companies are coming together under that Actually, organization. It's about 14 now. It's, it's yeah. grown, yeah. but are the original six that signed in March, um, you know, and growing and adding more companies. I think that's a tremendous initiative. Mm -hmm. um, however, is it, is it communicating as aggressively as, as, they, as they claim? 
maybe not so. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a level of risk comfort and, and you know, whether the perception, right, of, of whether they think they're, they're going out of their way to communicate these mm -hmm. things. And the energy sector is not the only one. Mm -hmm. I mean, agriculture is in trouble. We just heard from uh, a gentleman, uh, you know, Jeremy, who mm -hmm. was talking about agriculture yeah. and, and how that's shifting too. And then off camera, we were talking about genetically modified foods and, and of course, all kinds of innovation and developments there. Many people would suggest that that's not an open and transparent industry as well. No, you absolutely know, and not. And again, yet they probably feel they are. Well, just last you know. night, California's labeling, you know, the uh, initiative failed. Yeah. Uh, so you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, you look across a multitude of sectors, and there's individual issues across the board. Mm -hmm. And so um, the other overarching message that I heard here was, who's going to be the leader? Mm -hmm. Who's going to take the leadership role here? And, and frankly, I think I see the CSPC organizations like the Canadian Science Policy uh, Center mm -hmm. Uh, as well as the uh, Alberta Council of Technologies, mm -hmm. taking lead roles like that, wanting to collaborate and bring people together. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that that needs to continue for sure, but we get, we've got to get past just the talking. Yeah, although in, in fairness to the groups that have showed up here, the fact that they're here, the fact that we get top oil industry executives, the fact that we get top government officials, they're here and they're talking and they're, they're involved and they're taking part. Absolutely. And that's, sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, is get people involved with organizations, especially one that's only been around for four years. You know, it, it's not a long time. It's establishing a foothold. But to, when you look at the guests that we've had on the show, I mean, Preston Manning as well is another one. You look at that and you just see that there are high-level people getting involved in very many areas. And that goes directly to Dr. Miradad Harari, which is uh, our client and the, the Canadian Science Policy Center and his team and the committee and the board and how much effort they put in to continue to grow this initiative and this organization and community uh, and bring it together. And, and people are obviously respecting the work that's being done. I mean, this is a really well-run conference. We've attended several conferences, obviously, mm -hmm. and, and this was very, very well run. So, you know, I think it's going to grow continually. I, we've definitely grown the audience just by being here, and, and Dr. Rari is, uh, you know, uh, leading the charge there. So, uh, you know, I see great things ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about the science of what you do here, because, of course, at one time, you sell 250 tickets, that's all that gets to find out what's going on. What have you been doing with the conference? Well, the team here, in addition, has been accentuating that, right? So the attendance here, I don't know exact number, somewhere, but it's, it's somewhere in the 300s. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we do is we create an international awareness for an, uh, uh, you know, an audience that is, would normally be self-contained in a facility like this for three days. And, and we have been driving awareness ac across uh, numerous countries and uh, certainly across Canada. The, the number one province tuning in is Ontario. Well, we're sitting in Calgary, right? Right. So, uh, you know, event planners who are concerned about ticket sales, uh, and, and that's fair, but at the same time, there's a whole lot of people in Ontario watching right now that didn't hop a plane to come out. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll be able to do is get that message out to them as well. Uh, we've got people online communicating to us right now, asking for other areas of content that we're helping to generate here, and when will it be available to review, and so on and so forth. So there are two separate conversations going on here, one in the room and one online. Mm -hmm. Well, you talk about Canada, Ontario, and, and Alberta paying attention. Uh, tell us about some of the other countries that have, you know, popped in to see what's going on. Well, certainly the U.S. is, a, is, is at the top, uh, you know, and, and dis even despite the, the big event of the, uh, the election, mm -hmm. you know, uh, going on for the last several months, that's consuming a lot of uh, uh, airtime online and so on. But, you know, the, the U.S., New York just hit hard. Uh, one of the states hit hard by Sandy, and New York is a top state tuning in. Mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting that uh, it's reaching out. We've actually got both coasts. We've got New York and California's next. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and we go across the oceans as well. Well, absolutely. The UK. And of course, we've had folks, uh, you know, uh, Ian Gillespie from Edinburgh, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, Tony McBride in from uh, the Royal Society of London. Mm -hmm. And so we've had the UK audience tune in as well. So what we're seeing is as people come in and fly in, like Mike Harrington did from mm -hmm. Cape Town last right. night, we've got people tuning in from those countries to support those people who are presenting. And the only way you can do that is by streaming the event live. Mm -hmm. Where do you see this going in the future as far as getting the word out? So, so they're taking a great step here, uh, the group has, but, 
but where can it go from here? Well, this is really what we've created here, I think, is a, is a TV station for hire, essentially. So uh, events and conferences, companies, organizations can literally come together and say, listen, we want to put, put a certain message out. We want to ensure that we target certain audiences. How can we do that? And this becomes a mechanism for doing that. It's incredibly professional, it's timely, it's fast, it's real time, and it's engaging across, the, across a number of different messaging uh, centers. So it's, it's there for the taking, and I think more and more people are figuring it out now. Right. You know, the one thing I noticed with this interview that I didn't see any others is that you're not standing behind the camera telling me that we're out of time. <laughs> That's right. That's but right. I think we are. I think we are, I, I too. I think we are. Walter, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Rob. We've been chatting with Walter Schwabe with Fuse Logic.